Some great signups for serve day yesterday. Let's go. Guys really made a comeback. <laughs> they were up to like 70 people getting ready for serve day in a couple weeks. But before that, Easter weekend. It's not a Sunday anymore. Resurrection is a weekend. Beginning, um, actually, Wednesday night, really. Wednesday night, worship, communion, Pastor John Smith, not Shouse, but Smith, and Dr. Elizabeth Smith coming over from New Orleans to be with us Wednesday night. Two Good Friday services, family services. Those will be less than an hour. We want to see you there. And then Easter Resurrection weekend, 4.30, 8 o'clock, 9.30, and 11.15. I had, we were talking about this earlier, I had no idea how in the world we were going to go from Nehemiah to Palm Sunday <laughs> to Resurrection Weekend. I didn't know how it was going to fit, um, but God showed me. And I'm, I've preached this message four times now, so what did you hear? Dig in a little bit. Feel free to comment, question. We'll watch and try to respond to the best of our ability as well. So I, what I love, and the mess, title of the message was Stones Can Sing, mm -hmm. which you would kind of go back and forth though on palm trees and Pharisees, or which yeah. I, I like that too. Palm but trees and um, I had never heard the angle of the rocks crying out, which we have it, and they put it in hymns and songs and all of that kind of stuff. And we've I've heard that many times growing up in church, but I never heard it from the perspective <clears> of <throat> we were created from dust, which is just broken down stones. Yeah. yeah. And so yeah. even if what you're creating, even if even if you won't cry out with your mouth, the very fabric of what you, mankind was made from that is still all around us will testify to the goodness of God and will cry out. And he says, we'll, we'll praise in their place. And uh, I thought it was, you know, if you think their praise is weird, wait till them rock starts. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to get a little hairy around here. Uh, which I thought was funny, but I just never heard it from that perspective. Yeah. Literally, the, the fiber of our makeup. The way it's, it's going to testify whether we choose to with our mouth or not. Mm -hmm. And so don't let them cry out in our place, but just be who we were created to be in praise, praising Jesus. I, I, one, I love the first point that you started off with. I think it's foundational is, is getting back to God's word. Um, I, I find it intriguing that at the end of Nehemiah, this is almost like a seal the deal moment for them. This is, I mean, obviously they've, they've experienced opposition up, up until this point. Uh, they've been trying to work vigorously to get this wall up, the gates up, get this city back operational. Uh, people are coming back from the pandemic. I love that, that comparison that you had yesterday. Totally stole that from Pastor Wayne something. I can't remember his <laughs> last name. Well, he was a labor. <laughs> Either way, I, I just, Wayne I Francis. love yeah. Francis. Wayne yeah, Francis. Wayne Go Francis. watch Wayne Francis. He's um, hilarious. I just, I love the comparison there, but I found it so intriguing that no matter what they faced, no matter the, the opposition, no matter the season that they were in, they, they still sealed the the moment that they had with God's word, they still were willing to come back to it. And oftentimes, uh, what happens is when we have this, we start off in a, in a relationship with Jesus. Everything's great, right? And we're so excited, we're so jazzed up about it, and we want to dive in, we want to go deep. But yet, oftentimes, what happens is we trickle off. You know, relationship season of life kind of happens. Different things get in the way, and we miss the moment. But this all happened, and they were still willing to come back to God's Word. Why? Because it's foundational. Because this is what's going to continue to 400 years later when Jesus was going to walk down these steps and come up to this very city. This was going to be the thing that keeps this city from falling apart all over again. Yeah. 400 years of silence. Mm followed this build right the holy spirit according to jewish tradition and history god did not speak mm. for 400 years outside of one miracle so the people were very attentive i didn't get into this yesterday but nehemiah 13 does not end on a high note mm -hmm. nehemiah 13 nehemiah is frustrated because everything that was just said is yeah. no longer being shown. The people actually, and since we're on like the, the church here, um, the people stopped tithing. Mm. 
Mm. The, the people stop providing for the Le Levites and the storehouse. The people stop singing. They stop serving and they stop guarding the gates. And ultimately, it was during that 400 years that instead of Israel, you had a, they had an opportunity for Israel to be revived. Mm. Back to the days of David and Solomon. They come back into the city. God is wanting, he is showing that he wants to restore Jerusalem. He wants to restore the nation of Israel. But instead of the nation of Israel rising to power again, Rome rises to power again because of the fall in Nehemiah chapter 13. Wow. It's, a, it's that word apathy where we get indifferent, where yeah. we get, oh, well, we feel satisfied with what we've gotten. And, and man, look what we did. Now I guess that's it. We don't have to do anything else. I'm saved, so I guess I just go to church once a week, and that's about it. And we can become indifferent to to what God's calling us to, to the next step that He wants us to take. Um, and, and I think and part of that comes from not understanding who who you are and who who God is and who He created you to be. Um, you know, the Pharisees didn't understand their praise of them praising Jesus. Right. Um, it's because they didn't understand who Jesus was. We see time and time again Jesus trying to show them who he is and how Scripture reveals that. Even the Scripture, the law of Moses that they're quoting, how it reveals who he is as the Son of God, and they just don't see it. And yeah. so they don't understand it. But the people the people who have gotten it, man, they can't help but praise. They right. can't help but do. They can't help but... And so when we, when we truly understand who Jesus is and who we are because of that, um, then I think that helps fight off some of that apathy that can that can tend to set in when we just become complacent. You always, I always reading through the Gospels. Jesus makes these comments to the Pharisees, like your fathers didn't do what you're giving them credit for doing. Yeah, mm -hmm. I, I don't know why Jesus wasn't more specific, but <laughs> with them, you know, I, I I I was there when we wrote Nehemiah chapter thirteen. Yeah. <laughs> I was there at the end of the book of Ezra and Nehemiah. And I know that 400 years ago, yeah. you did not do what you were giving yourself credit. So they understood what to practice. They just didn't understand what the purpose of their practice was. Yeah. And essentially, because they didn't understand the purpose, that led to them no longer truly producing what God had for them to produce. And right. so instead of living as the lender and not the borrower... These arrogant, pharisaical people were living under the tyranny of the Roman Empire yeah. and giving themselves credit of being where God wanted them to be. <laughs> and, they, and Jesus is constantly telling these guys, no, your fathers didn't yeah. do. If they did, you wouldn't be under Pilate and you wouldn't be under Herod. You would be Pilate. You would be Herod. My hand would be upon you. That's why I'm here, actually. Mm -hmm. So the whole thing that this God, how does it fit? And I, and I found out when I followed what I felt like God was telling me to do, which is really important. We might dig into that a little bit. When I followed what I felt like God was telling me to do, I found out how this whole thing fit. I didn't want to do Nehemiah. I yeah. think most of our church heard me say, I didn't want to do a study on mm -hmm. Nehemiah. Honest confession, when I heard Wayne Francis, Pastor Wayne Francis, preach a message about Ezra and Nehemiah, dude, I was impressed. I was like, I don't know those books that well to be able to fit all that together. And it wasn't until we did this series and I studied this out yeah. just for this series that I actually put it all together and even understood the sermon yeah. that I was laughing at nine months ago um, that I didn't fully grasp. And so understanding how something fits is dependent, honestly, dependent upon how long I'm willing to follow what God has. I think a big thing of, of that is, one, just obviously us being pastors, you being Pastor Chris, like obviously you, you read your word, you study it, you know, right? But I lot, like it too. Yeah, I mean, it's fun. Yeah, it's an, it's enjoyable. I think for most of us, we we've got to get to a place of just consistency. And talking, kind of going back to getting in, getting in God's word, the religious people of that day they were consistent 
oh, they would, you know, but it, it became more about show instead of letting the words of God actually impact their life and their behavior reflecting as such. And so to me, it's, it's the, practical, the practical side of I need to be better at letting God speak to me through his word, yeah. albeit Nehemiah, albeit Genesis, obviously the Gospels, which we're going to be getting into in the next month after our Easter plug in our April series, but it, it's just coming, becoming more consistent, becoming more consistent in reading God's Word. And when we do that, and when we hear the words of Jesus, and we hear His heart, then we're able to really, number two, we learn how to praise God. We learn why it's important, it's valuable. Yeah, because the more you study God's Word, the more you realize who He is. Yeah. The more you understand who He is as Lord, as Savior, as Creator, as King. And, and so your point, every great revival requires a return to God's word because we remember or we, we are, it's re-revealed to us, yep. you know, who God is or even for the first time, who God is. And, and when that happens, like we said, you can't help but, can't help but praise. And then, yep. you, then you begin to discover how we were created to praise and the way that we were. And, and there's a lot of cool things if you go and study. The Old Testament's not just there for stories and stuff. Um, it, it's there because it, it's a gradual revelation of who God is throughout time. And it's all pointing to Jesus the whole way. And, and you bringing up Lucifer and, and that whole, uh, I mean, it goes even deeper than that. As you know, you know, the, the nine stones that he had. Now we have nine gifts of the Spirit and all of this mm -hmm. stuff. How, how he fell and, and we were created in the same way but differently to give God glory in everything that we do. Uh, and, and our speech and gifts of the Spirit and our actions was created to reflect God's glory yeah. differently than he did, um, but, but the same purpose. And so when we praise, when we, we get out there, I love how you pointed out, it's, it's not that we, we're not good at praising. Mm -hmm. Everybody praises whatever, you know, they, they'll celebrate whatever, they, right. whatever they're into, but it's about directing that and giving God the praise yeah. um, and putting him in priority. Um, I, I mean, I know you got up in some people's grill yesterday, and, you know, some specific examples. Um, I thought it was so fun. I don't know if you did it on purpose, the whole cheer thing, because they had all the cheer trials last week. Oh, or it was not. all over my Facebook. <laughs> I couldn't yeah. help but notice the, but I was like, which is nothing wrong with exactly. praising, like exactly. praising and celebrating your You're child. You're created to do that. Yeah, You're created okay. to praise lots of things. Yeah. Yeah. Um, that's why I think it feels so unnatural when, when you around somebody who's negative all the time or somebody who's who's constantly got something to say because that's not how we were created. Um, but you have to choose. You have to make it the priority. I read God's word. He's revealed to me, and then I praise him for, for, for who he is, for what he's done. Uh, and I know I'm taking a lot of time here, but you pointing out they praised him for what they had seen. They weren't just going to him with, with you know, hey, I need you to do this. And, I want you. and Pastor Blaine, even not knowing what you were preaching on, shared a little bit about mm -hmm. that in our prayer time. It's not just a... I like how he said it, blab it and grab it and name it and claim it. But it's, it's God, I come to you with this. Yeah. I trust who I've seen you to be and who you revealed yourself to me to be. And I trust you with the results in the future, no matter what your will is. Yeah. Right. He will answer. Right. He will grant. He will answer. So two things, and unless, well, you had... I got some stuff. No, so go no, no, because I'm going to remember what I was going to say. I, so I won't. I don't know. <laughs> no, I really won't. No, uh, I'm glad. I'm glad you did that. Uh, no, I just, as you were talking about just the thought of um, where your praise is, you know, your children, which, which again, we're, we're taught, you know, hey, you celebrate your kids. They need to hear that. It's valuable for them. I, I think you can measure or identify your priority of praise by which one is the loudest. And I mean, it, Facebook, uh, I mean, obviously a lot of that, that's our out, right? That's our expression right now. Social media is, is our expression as parents, as loved ones. Man, who are you celebrating? Who are you praising on there? Not, not again, not saying that you have to make that some sort of religious page and like, oh, you know, if you don't share this in the next five seconds, then you don't love Jesus. I'm not saying being crazy like I that. I unfriend those people. Yeah, but, <laughs> but you, can, you can tell your level of priority when it comes to who, who are you praising the loudest? Is it your teams? Is it your, you know, I love that, that example. So I, I think just putting that in perspective. You know, who, who, who are you praising the loudest? I thought it was funny that we will praise people we don't even know just because they're on our team. Yeah. 
the, that, okay. So, um, mm -hmm. two things. One, I know I've heard, and I, and I actually relate to this. I really want to study the Bible. I just don't really know how. Like, I've been there. I get that. And then there are times today where, like Nehemiah, I didn't really know where to start. When we went into this series, yeah. I was like, okay, Ezra and Nehemiah used to be together. Do I start there? Do I just start reading and let the Holy Spirit download? Do I, so I start listening. I start listening to other people that I respect, that I know I can glean from. God showed me some other things that I could read and listen to. And I began to just, I, I would say, gather biblical information which is one way to study scripture. Now, it's also a, a way to end up in a rabbit hole and feel like you didn't get anywhere, but I feel like God can use that. Yeah. And, and I'm, I, unfortunately, that's part of the process of us studying and understanding, standering, understanding historical context. If we're talking about studying God's word and learning to praise, you're not going to praise somebody you don't know yeah. unless they happen to be on the team that you love. So what you're still praising something that you're familiar with. Okay? And we have a hard time praising God because we're not familiar with him. We have a hard time praising Jesus because we're not familiar with Jesus. We don't know him intimately. Okay, hang on. I'll come back to that. One of the best ways that I have found to study God's word is to write sermons. Mm -hmm. Write sermons that you never preach. Like you don't even have to preach them to anybody. I got a bunch of those. I have <laughs> written so many sermons I have not preached. Yep. Um, now, eventually, I, I preached a version of them, or I, yeah. I learned something in that so that I was able to place to over yeah. here, and it came back up. But if you want to study God's Word, and you want to get closer in that manner, one of the best ways to do it is to write a sermon. It doesn't have to be a 40-minute, three-part, whatever sermon, but write a message. Write a message that you would share for five to ten minutes with your family, or with your friends, or dive into a topic and study that topic out. So that's one way. The second thing I was going to say there is I had a hard time growing up, even though I was growing up in church. I didn't understand what it meant to know God. How do I know Jesus? Like, I believe he existed, but I didn't grasp the concept of knowing who he is. How do I know uh, an intangible being that I've never seen, heard, Etc., etc., touch, sense, smelled, whatever. I don't have a hard time loving a person that I can see. How do I? Okay, so what I learned was the more that I studied His Word, spent time as the church, with the church, in the church, worshiping, mm -hmm. listening, <clears throat> growing closer to Him, so the more that I learned about Him, Okay. the better I got to know him. Yep. And the better I got to know him, the more I learned to love him. Hmm. And so worshiping or praising someone I knew became a natural response, response not a forced action. It started out as a forced action. Yep. It was hard I'll say on our church Facebook page, it was hard for this little missionary Baptist boy to lift his hands and clap and shout and et cetera, et cetera in a, in a service because that's not, it wasn't me. Yeah. That's not how I was raised or constructed to, to worship, but it's biblical. And I've found that the greater I grew in my relationship with God, the more natural it was and the less forced it became. Yeah, and I mean, in our day and age, and you've mentioned this, I think, on Sunday about just us being information overload, what you want to know is at the tip of your fingers. Mm -hmm. And what you don't want to know, if you're never going to, yep. like, if you don't put forth the effort. You know, don't know a whole lot about, I don't know how to, you know, or how do you find this in Scripture, how do you find that? Well, Google's right there. Do you, you don't know that, but you can tell me... Uh, what Biden said in the 84 interview on gun control. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, like you can, if you want to know, you're going to find out. <laughs> so like just putting forth the effort, we'll scroll right. all day and read a million articles on this policy or this team or that person. And I'm guilty of it myself. That's why I'm saying that. 
Yeah. Um, you know, I, I, I subscribe to The Athletic, and I mean, there's so many articles on there that talk about how so-and-so grew up and before he played football, all this stuff. But it's like, if we're gonna, if you're gonna know Jesus, you're gonna have to study his word. Yeah. And it's easier than ever before to do that. Yes. And then plug for our reading for this week. Um, I tried to re-upload the link for it because for some people it wasn't working, um, our reading link. So I re-uploaded it. Hopefully it works for you. If not, um, you can just, the, the title's on it right there. It's an Easter devotional, Easter five-day devotional, and, and the importance and the step and the days that Jesus took leading up to that Easter resurrection and what it all means and, and what he modeled in his last days mm. before his, his sacrifice and resurrection. So the link's on our Facebook. Check that out. If the link's not working for you, just go to your version search Easter five-day devotional. It's the first one that pops up. Um, but it should be working. I try to read. Which is also really fun, just as a side note, as we bring this thing to a close, because we got a lot this week, and we want to see you in person and or online. Understand that if you can't gather in person, you can gather online. It's why we record. It's why we produce. It's why we have multiple teams up here for hours a week to send our message, yep. uh, God's message, out for Easter. In saying that, there's some really cool studies out there about the week on the way to the cross. Yeah, I read about seven of them this morning. Yeah. <laughs> trying to trying to pick the right one. Trying to figure out which but, one. And they were all good. Yeah. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. They were all great, but and I wanted a, a five-day one. It's so. just a cool supplemental study as you get into, as we're headed towards Good Friday and Resurrection Weekend, Resurrection Sunday, to understand the journey that Jesus took from Bethany into Jerusalem and what all happened in that seven or eight day period between the healing of Lazarus and then the cross and the resurrection from the dead. It's a really cool study that you can dig into and learn a little bit more about that will make you have a greater appreciation for Absolutely. Resurrection Weekend and that yeah. Sunday. Final thoughts? Yeah, final thoughts are, are really just... And, and if you were in second service yesterday or you saw that service online, you, you saw the emotion of, of just our, our, who our Savior is and, and how we were created to praise. And, and I love that beautiful illustration that when we just get to a place of, of knowing who our Creator is and, and who Jesus is and what He did for us and that He stretched His palms out, then the more comfortable you become in, in praising or lifting a hand or even opening up your mouth. And so I would just encourage you, if you're watching this or live or maybe later, to, to, to be more comfortable. It's going to take you just taking the extra effort to, and this is a great starting point, this week, this sermon and Easter weekend, to become more comfortable in doing some of those things and, and praising so the rocks don't cry out, the, the stones aren't going to sing for me. I'm going to praise Jesus all on my own because of how much I know the Creator. And that only become that comes more comfortable when you're just willing to dive in a little deeper, when you're willing to go and research some of those things and look those things up and, and watching sermons and different talks like this. So educate yourself, help, help yourself understand, look some of those things up, read Scripture, and I promise you it will only help you become more comfortable in worshiping your Creator. Hey, God bless you. Have a great week and join us for as many services as possible. We look forward to seeing you.